Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to look at an AP pelvis in the trauma setting. And here I have a plain film of the pelvis. This is an AP view of the pelvis, and I'll go through it step by step how to look at this and exclude fractures. <clears throat> so, my basic search pattern I've uh, kind of already mentioned. I basically want to know about four things. I want to know about the technique first. I then want to know about normal anatomy. Then I'm looking for common pathologies, in this case really common fractures. And then I want to have a dedicated search pattern for trying to look at and exclude all those things. So in this case, for the, this is a radiograph. So it's not going to show me every single fracture, but it is going to show me, uh, it's going to give me some general information. So it is something to keep in mind that you may not see every single subtle non-displaced fracture on this study, but you're going to see uh, most of the important ones. And as far as the anatomy, go through the anatomy with the uh, search pattern and kind of the disease process uh, here all together. Basically, one thing I want to point out is that most people kind of look at these studies kind of like here, and they kind of try to figure out what's going on in this, in this type of a view. I think you really want to use it, take advantage of the spatial resolution of x-ray. When you zoom in, you can still see very crisp outlines, and you want to use that to your advantage. So make sure you zoom in, and I basically zoom in, and I just go all the way through the pelvis looking for common fractures in a step-by-step in a -step fashion. So here you can see I'm at the right femur here. This is the subtrochanteric region of the femur. This is the intertrochanteric region of the femur. Here's the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. This is actually an anterior structure uh, where the iliopsoas inserts. And this is the greater trochanter is where the gluteal muscles insert. And I want to look for any subtrochanteric or intertrochanteric fracture as evidenced by lucency in this region. I then kind of move on. And now I'm looking at this nice femoral neck you can see here. So the femoral neck can uh, oftentimes be fractured, so I'm going to definitely look for any subtle loss of this normal curvature or any sort of lucency or crack within this bone. You can actually see here the trabecula of the bone, uh, basically the internal bone matrix. And you can see how it's forming these stress lines. And basically, I can even a subtle non-displaced fracture, you might see just a disruption of just these lines as evidence of that fracture. So I'm going to point out this increased sclerosis here, just a bone island, which is an incidental finding. So moving on from the femoral neck, I'm now looking at the femoral head. And uh, so I uh, just want to point out, this is the subcapital region, and this is the basal cervical region of the neck. Uh, the definitely femoral neck fracture is something you want to focus on. Femoral head fracture is less common, um, although you know, I'm looking for it. I'm basically, in the setting of a hip dislocation, you can get a femoral head fracture. Uh, so just kind of looking at the rounding curvature of this femoral head. Then want to point out also kind of the acetabulum here. Uh, you can see here the... Uh, you know, acetabulum, you can see two lines here which represent the anterior and posterior wall. How do you tell which is which? Uh, basically, the anterior acetabulum is continuous with this, which is the superior pubic ramus. So I track that back and sort of see that there's a little line here. Right there, it's a little faint. And that's going to represent the anterior wall, the acetabulum. And this line, which is continuous with the ischium here, is going to be the posterior wall of the acetabulum. You can see that right there. So in a typical hip dislocation, it posteriorly hip dislocates and cracks the posterior wall. So I'm kind of looking for traumatic injury there. I'm then going to kind of go from the femoral neck and head. I'm just going to come into these pubic rami here. So here you can see the superior pubic ramus. You can see the inferior pubic ramus. And this is the ischium right here, this bone right here. And this is actually posterior. This is the bone that if you are sitting down, this is actually the bony protuberance that you're sitting on. It's this right here, the ischial tuberosity. So, you know, definitely looking for any, any lucency or cracks in the, this nice smooth bone here. Same thing with the superior pubic ramus and inferior pubic ramus. You know, these are kind of where the subtle fractures occur that people miss, especially when they're zoomed out. So I'm definitely looking very closely here. Um, kind of go through some lines that people use to help look for fractures. You have the, this is the ilium, this bone here. So this is the iliopectineal line here. It's a nice smooth curve. So if there's a disruption of this nice smooth curve, that could be a fracture in the superior pubic ramus. I also have the ilio ischial line here, which that can uh, be interrupted in the setting of an ischial fracture, or maybe an inferior pubic ramus fracture. Then kind of move on from the pubic rami. I come here to the symphysis. Uh, in traumatic injury, I can have widening of the symphysis, so I'm looking for that. And then I kind of do the same thing I did on this side. I just kind of round up and, and do the same thing here on the left. I basically go up inferior, uh, superior and inferior pubic ramus, the ischium, 
looking at the femoral head, looking at the femoral neck, and the intratrochanteric region, the subtrochanteric region. And then eventually, uh, I just kind of make my way up to the ilium. So, I'll just go to the right here. Here you can see the right iliac bone here. It's kind of a scooped out bone. It kind of has a, a bowl-like shape, and it's kind of coming forward here, so kind of end on here. Uh, you can appreciate that. Uh, just some landmarks. You can see here the uh, superior, uh, anterior superior iliac spine here, and this is the anterior inferior iliac spine. And there's some site of some muscle attachments. Uh, basically looking at the iliac bone for any subtle fracture involving it. Uh, it can just be fractured in the, in the setting of trauma. And I'm basically just running the cortex looking for any uh, subtle crack in the cortex or any sort of lucency going through the bone itself. And as I come over here medially, I can now see the SI joint here. Uh, SI joint can be widened in the setting of trauma, so I'm just kind of checking. This is a normal appearance of it. It is a joint, so it should have some lucency within it, but I'm looking to see if it's abnormally widened. If one side is asymmetrically widened, uh, relative you know, right to the left, that can be a sign of a traumatic injury. Of course, I look at the left ilium, same as I look at the right. Um, looking at the sacrum now, here's the sacrum. And you can note these sacral struts, the sacral foramina where the nerves uh, escape the, the base of the cotoquina there. And they can have some subtle fractures here, so you just kind of want to make sure that these sacral ala or these uh, sacral struts are maintained. There should be a nice smooth curve. They can often be cracked there, let's say in a trauma. And here's the, uh, you know, the coccyx. So basically, sometimes people may note that the lower sacrum is obscured by kind of underpenetration of bowel gas. You may see that noted in a lot of AP pelvis films that this aspect is not well seen. So it's just something to keep in mind. And kind of lastly, I want to make sure I look at the lumbar vertebrae. Uh, sometimes we're not seeing a whole lot of it here, but this is the L5 vertebral body. I can see here these transverse processes. Uh, oftentimes people forget to look here and they can miss a subtle fracture of the lumbar vertebrae. That's image on the AP pelvis. So that's kind of about it. Uh, 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 that's kind of how I look at this type of study. Um, I just basically go step by step. Like I said, I zoom in. So I get a nice, uh, I get good spatial resolution. And I get a good understanding of the bone, and I just kind of go in order, coming around, and then coming up around the iliac bones, coming into the sacrum, making sure I check the lumbar spine. And if you do that, you should pick up uh, most of the clinically significant fractures on AP with the pelvis. Hope this video was helpful. Uh, thank you for your time.